clairsentience. The good, the bad, the ugly. recommend watching the previous video, Clairvoyance, to get a full grasp of how it is scientifically possible through quantum entanglement, non-locality, and string theory to even use our psychic abilities. And you know, it's actually very surprising, but once you learn this kind of stuff, it all makes sense. Now that we're all caught up, <laughs> I want to talk about clairsentience and my perspective with it being my main ability. If you didn't know, clairsentience is the ability that deals with perceiving or sensing information through feelings, emotions, or physical sensations of and inside the body. Those who possess this ability tend to have an enhanced sense of empathy and intuition that allows them to pick up on subtle energy, emotions, or vibrations from people, other living or non-living beings, places, or objects. This ability can present itself in a multitude of ways, such as strong gut instincts or intuitive hunches that guide them in decision-making, perceiving other people's emotions, cravings, and ailments as if they were their own, or perceiving energetic imprints left in particular locations there are even those who can sense the history or events associated with an object by touching or holding it, aka psychometry, and I actually did talk a little bit about that in the previous episode. Clairsentience is oftentimes interconnected with other psychic abilities. You can have psychic abilities that are commingled with other psychic abilities. It doesn't necessarily only have to be clairsentience. So for example, claircognizance and clairaudience can be commingled together. But with my perspective of clairsentience and it being my main ability, I noticed it works with all of my other psychic abilities, which can provide a more in-depth understanding of the information that you are being provided and just your overall perception of the information. So, from my perspective of having clairsentience without effort at all, okay, and this can be difficult, <laughs> without any effort, no matter where I am, I can feel anybody's ailments, I can feel their emotions, I can feel their cravings, I even, like, I don't know, it's so weird to me because it's like, mm, is it my body or is it their body? And a lot of times, you know, there's a specific energy in how it feels. So, like, when dealing with clairvoyance, when you're receiving downloads in your brain and you're seeing images, there's a specific energy in how it feels when you're receiving that information. Same thing with clairsentience. So, you know, recently, I would say within the past year or maybe even a year and a half to two years, I've been able to tell the difference between my pain or my own like stuff that's going on, whether it's emotions, pain, cravings, versus somebody else's. And it's the best way to explain it is there's like, an, like a uh, dis disassociation between mine and someone else's feelings. And it's like, I feel it, but there's a disconnect. I don't know how else to explain it because I'll feel it like it's my own and it could be part of the clear um, cognizance of or clear audience because like I said those two can commingle and just being told or knowing that oh that's not part of my body but generally speaking it does feel different. It's like a lighter version. It's like 
picture or imagine how you feel like let's say your stomach hurts but if I'm picking it up from somebody else and I have stomach issues okay so this is where it gets tricky but it feels different it's like you know when you have a picture and you put a watermark on it it's that's the best way I can describe it it's like faint it's not like I'm experiencing it a hundred percent if that makes sense it's like fainter so that's the best way I can explain it however in the beginning when I couldn't tell the difference it felt like me and it was a hundred percent all like pain or agony or whatever and I think too as you go on and as you learn how to release that into you know for me I'll release it in a tree or the earth and that's grounding so but once I figured out that I needed to do that, that's when the pains and stuff started to like chill and calm down and be more faint because I'm able to release it faster. But here's, here's the negative part. Here's the ugly part. If you have no way or you do not understand how to release that energy, it's going to build up into your body. It can block chakras and it can make you sick AF, okay? And I'm not kidding, growing up, I didn't know I even had any psychic abilities. And because I didn't know I was absorbing everybody's, and when I say everybody, I mean everybody. When, yeah, so I was absorbing everybody's shit. And because I didn't realize I was absorbing everybody's shit, I wasn't releasing it. And it made me really sick. It made my um, abdominal illnesses significantly worse. It made all of my health shit worse. School, oh my god. I was around, you know what school's like, you're around hundreds of fucking kids. And you know, they all have their own problems because you know, everyone has problems, especially as kids. And if you don't, you know what, you're lucky. But then why are you watching my videos if you're a kid? Anyway, yeah, being surrounded by people and okay, the other bad thing, sometimes if you don't know how to release that energy, going out into public, I'm not gonna lie, is a fucking bitch. And even though I now know how to release this energy, I'm still learning. So I'm not super fast at it. And so there's still some residual buildup in my body and it still leaves me sick. So I can't be in crowds for long periods of time. I will immediately get a headache right off the bat. And it has to do with all the energy, all the residual energy, all the energy that people are putting off. It just sits in my head because it's trying to get, it's trying to get out. And oh, here's another thing. One of the ugly things about clairsentience is that when you're connecting with deceased people, especially earthbound spirits, even if they intend to be negative or not, they're dead right? So let's say someone experienced a car wreck. Uh, yeah, if they're going to show you how they died, you're going to feel that. And uh, sometimes it's not pleasant. Sometimes it sucks. Sometimes it can last a few days. When I'm about to talk to a client, it can be a week before. And I've said this previously, like I'll experience hauntings and whatnot. But same thing with ailments. I'll start feeling their ailments a week before I even know I have them as a client. And I'll be like, what the heck is going on? Why am I having chest spasms? Why am I having arthritis in my elbow? Like, this makes no sense. This this stuff does not happen to me. This isn't my normal, like, ailment situation. Clairsentient. It's because you're clairsentient and you're picking up, you know, potential um, clients or people you're gonna cross paths with it's yeah it's so weird and like I said it happens even before you know the person exists and yeah that's just another kind of like bad thing but at the same time it's like okay once you feel what they feel then you have an understanding you know how they feel and it's easier for you to process and then provide help it is very helpful to have this ability, especially like if you're in a field or you're around people or beings that can't fully communicate, right? You have nonverbal children, you know, with autism or just children that are different, okay? Um, that can't convey what hurts or what's going on. I can feel when my friends are having issues. 
but I can talk to somebody and be like, mm, does your jaw hurt? Like, I'm getting this weird, like, sensation in my jaw and it hurts. Or it's like, um, spasming and this, this, this never happens to me. So this is weird. And they'll be like, oh yeah, I've got TMJ or I have a spasm disorder or what have you. Like, it's so weird and I don't try. It just happens. But that's how I pretty much experience like clairsentience. I don't know. I guess this would be part of it too. The whole moon situation and me being my, in my manic phase right now. But the energy from the moon, I feel that shit. And I'm just like bouncing off the walls. And I'm just like, hey, yeah. Anyway, if you know, you know that reference. But um, yeah, clairsentient people can be empathic. They can be empathic. And typically they are empathic. However, empathic people aren't necessarily clairsentient. Empathic people typically feel the emotions of others. They can still get psychic information by touching and holding things and or just receiving it by being near somebody. But empaths have the ability to feel emotions through their own emotions from other beings, whether they're dead or alive and through energetic imprints. And it could be a pathway to other psychic abilities. And I learned too, like the more a person cares and loves the easier it is for them to connect with another person. And when you have that connection, it's kind of like you have that experience of feeling what they feel and then understanding. And yeah, it pretty much opens a doorway for you to connect with other people and other beings. So let's talk about quick ways to ground yourself, like quick tips here. Um, And most people just say, oh, walk barefoot in the grass. <laughs> well, you know, some people don't have grass. Some people, depending on where they live, they could be living in a city and, you know, they live in an apartment and they don't have grass. That they can just walk barefoot. Or, you know, there's places that are not very cleanly or clean that they can do that. But so then I would recommend go outside. <laughs> you have to go outside for this, guys. I'm sorry. But go outside, find a tree. I would find a nice hardy tree. Don't find a dead tree either. That that doesn't help you. Go find a tree, put your hands on it, and just imagine all of the negative energy, residual energies you don't want in your body. Then um, visualize putting that energy into the tree. And you can visualize it going up the tree and it being purified as it goes out the branches and the leaves, or, you know, you can visualize it going down into the earth and being uh, purified in the earth. And if you do it barefoot and you're walking barefoot, um, you can imagine the energy going down into the earth through your feet and it being purified. But as long as you're visualizing the energy leaving your body, and then being purified, you're good. Um, it takes a lot of practice, honestly, because sometimes, especially when you're holding onto a tree, you gotta, like, feel it. You gotta, like, manifest it going in, and I don't know. There's just something about it. Also, you can do the crystals. You can wear crystals and stuff. However, this isn't, like, a long-term solution, because first off, they have limits. You have to charge them. You got to cleanse them. And they're really good for short term. But if you're someone that's main ability is clairsentience, just crystals alone ain't gonna cut it. You need to, you still need to cleanse yourself. You can do cleansing baths. You can do your sage palo santo wood. You can use your oils, your holy oils, your herbal oils. Um, You really need to take care of your body. Touching things whether you're doing psychometry or not. Everything has energy. Everything has a feel to it. All crystals, anything really. Crystals, I don't know, this fucking brush. I mean, has energy to it. And to get practice, start with crystals. I feel like they're easier. But take a crystal in your hand, close your eyes in a meditation. And just 
assess, feel it. What does it feel like? Um, I would write it down, honestly, so you can remember, but like realize and see how it feels, document it, and like take note of it, observe it, and just start holding different items. Um, it works very well with earth things, so like you can pick up a stick, you can pick up a flower, you can pick up a leaf feel the energy. I started doing this and I then started seeing the entities associated with the um, thing I picked up. Um, when you have nature things, anything that's considered living or has energy, which everything's made up of energy, but especially living things like plant life, um, anything that was living has a deity or a spirit or some kind of being associated with it. So, I mean, even though a crystal isn't technically living, it's still of the earth and there are spirits that rule over earthly things. And like, for example, I have this tree in my yard and there's one specific tree that I go to to put my hands on. I have a contract with it. And some people get turned off by the word contract. You don't have to have a contract with anything. I just say contract because it's easier for me to like explain. It's more of an understanding, if you will. But I have an understanding with that tree out there. There is a dryad associated with that tree, which is a tree spirit. And, you know, I'll be talking about dryads in the future, so be ready. But, um, yeah, that spirit and I have an understanding and it protects me, it protects my energy, and actually it's helping me keep entities out. Now, of course, there are some entities that are really, 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 really fucking nasty that, you know, can't do it on its own, but actually for the majority of, you know, the time, I haven't had a single problem um, with anything coming in my house. It is awesome and it showed me its world and it was friggin' cool. So everything living or of the earth has a spirit associated with it and you can communicate with that spirit. Depending on your uh, psychic abilities, it will depend how you communicate with it. Because I have all the clairs, I use them all to communicate with them. And so like you can ask for protection, you can ask for it to remove negative energies from your body and help you ground. I highly recommend that if you are somebody that can communicate to different spirits and things um, because we can't do this on our own the majority of the time. A lot of, there are some people that can, don't get me wrong, but you know, a lot of times we need help and that's okay. And you can ask too, like archangels, um, deities, it doesn't matter what religion you're in, okay? I personally now have been using the tree, the dryad outside that's been helping me, and I'll ask for archangels. Oh, and I also have a spirit team on the astral realm that they, they're literally like a group of female doctors, and they all wear like the same like outfit. And, it, and I've talked about this before, whether it was on here or the podcast, but like they're all in like this dark denim blue outfits with the long sleeves and the long dresses, but it's kind of like the old fashioned 1800s dress thing and like their hair in a nice bun and they'll lay me down on the ashram and then just like take out all that negative energy. And yeah, they all have to do that periodically, especially if I'm not getting rid of the negative energy fast enough. There are all sorts of ways that you can, you know, cleanse your body and remove that negative energy and ground yourself. So if you're someone experiencing like ailments and issues and having issues being in public, uh, this video is for you. And, you know, it's not gonna be forever that you're suffering. You'll be able to get rid of this energy so you don't feel any kind of yuckiness. Oh, let's talk about practicing like development here. So, okay. If you would want to practice this skill and be better at it, 
The best way you can do that is by physically touching or holding an object or person and see what information you perceive. Now, this is where, you know, if you have other psychic abilities, they'll come and assist you with that. But if you have clairsentience alone and that's all you've got, I mean, that's fine too. You can still do this. But the way you perceive information will be slightly different. You're going to just feel it in your body and through your emotions. You're going to feel everything that item or person has felt. Like, usually it's, for me, and this could be different for everybody else, it's more recent things that I'll feel or things that have caused trauma or things that have a huge significance in that person's life, you'll be able to feel. Um, I felt, so when I did that video for Omar Gosh TV, I was feeling his acid reflux and it was causing me to burp, which was kind of funny because while I have been able to disassociate, you know, these things, sometimes I do pick up a person's mannerisms and like ailments and I'll literally experience them as my own. So I know he's got some kind of like heartburn and acid reflux and indigestion. So I started burping and I'm like, shit, I need to record, dude. Like, this is crazy. Document what you feel, how you feel it. Remember, when you channel, that information goes fast. But, you know, with clairsentience, sometimes it lingers. I feel too like when it comes to clairsentience, that energy tends to linger more than the rest of the clairs, like when you use them. So like for clairvoyance, for example, the visions will go in and out really fucking fast. I would still document it because you can go back and recall that feeling and it'll help you tap in faster. So, and you can also use that as a line of travel. And I mean, same thing with all your abilities. When you're using them, you have to feel that energy and then go with that energy. So line of travel, like go with it, ride the wave of that energy and follow it where it goes. Um, I recommend practicing with a person so they can give you that yes or no feedback, which will validate those feelings, making it easier to identify, remember, and follow them. And crystals and meditation will help you as well. Like I stated, you can meditate with objects I would start with living things or things that have lived. So like plants, um, yeah, start with plants, animals. If you have like a cat, hold on to your kitty cat and just like, you can lay with them, her, he, whatever. Lay with your kitty cat, feel its energy, lay with your dog, feel their energy. I mean, it's all about feeling energies and stuff. But anyway, that's pretty much all I got for you. And, you know, the following videos of the Claire's aren't going to be as long as the first one. Because the first one we had to get into the introduction of how it's even possible. But now that we got that out of the way, now these videos are going to be somewhat quicker. But yeah, if you guys stayed through this entire video, you guys are super special, awesome. And you are ahead of everybody else. Just saying, the information that I provide in my videos, not everyone's talking about. And, I mean, that is what it is. They have their own teaching methods. I have mine. So, thanks again for watching. And I will see you tomorrow. Peace. If you guys like learning about mediumship, I highly recommend checking out my video, 5 Tips to Discern Spirits and Protect Yourself. This will give you a quick rundown of things you can do to figure out if spirits are good or bad while also learning to protect yourself.